Um, our group is premature infant training dummy, and we are group three. So for our, our presentation, we would like to go over the background, introduction, literature review, objective, material, then we're going to move on to the friendship, um, experimental design methods, uh, result and conclusion, and of course, the field work. So for our, our project, we'll be focusing on premature infants. And as we know, there are 15 million cases uh, of premature infant in the world uh, every year. And the causes for these are uh, multiple pregnancy, infection, and the chronic disease from the mother. And these mature, premature infants are lacking mercetone, and they are more sensitive to bacteria and viral um, infection. And so one of the common cases for premature infants is hypertonia. And as you can see, this is like a floppy syndrome for the baby, and the arm and legs are really floppy, as you can see in the picture. So uh, one one of the treatments for hypertonia is the infant positioning assessment tool. And as you can see in the picture, uh, for the hand, this um, is like the way to position the infants. And also the shoulder, the neck, the head, and the hips. So for our project, we would like to design a premature infant training dummy that can improve the nurse's experience in positioning the dummy and also try to reduce the permanent damage to the infant. And we would like to supply to the nursing department at HNC to enhance their studying experiences. So for, for the iPad, the advantage of the iPad is to position the infant with the recommended position that I that we showed earlier in the picture. And also the iPad also come with a scoring system to um, determine and like case um, to determine care for each um, infant case, and it also improved the condition of the infant by increasing the intake of oxygen and mobility in the muscle. And as of right now, there are a lot of applications for dummies, but uh, which one of which is the CPR dummy, the crash test dummy, the play, uh, the dolls, and this one is uh, a dummy for medical purposes, such as IV, blood pressure, and others. So from our literature review, we also um, find the, the criteria for the bacterial, which is have to be strong and flexible for the nurses to use, and also the range of freedom for each joint. And we are using the ball and socket joints for our prototype. You know, we have very basic goal with our device. We just want the device to be able to mimic um, a hypotonic premature infant that is 30 to 33 weeks old. You know, there are a lot of floppy um, mechanisms and all that, but it's obviously it's not. It's just a dummy, and this will serve as a training tool for nurses and physicians to practice positioning the babies correctly. And you know, just some basic expectations that the device should have is it should be able to follow the iPad guidelines, like what was mentioned earlier. Um, the infant's hands should be able to. Our devices hands and arms and shoulders should be able to go in a range of motion like within the body and out of that um, as expected of the iPad guidelines and should be easy to use. And some basic materials that we have, um, and this is from our second prototype, um, our limbs and this piece, most majority of the device is made of PVC pipes. You know, it's very sturdy, it's waterproof, it can last a very long time, and it's also inexpensive. And these parts are then connected together to create the limbs, which is connected to the ball and sockets, which make up the joints in the device, such as the shoulders and the hips, uh, legs area. And these are connected by screw and screw caps, which secure the pipes with the ball and socket, but still give it the rotation motion that it needs. And um, the pipes are also connected using screw caps to the flex adapters, which serves as the range of motion for the elbows and the knees. And that brings us to our design criteria. And as you can see, everything in the green is what we have been able to accomplish um, in terms of the range of motion and what the device can do um, that, that we have successfully done. And everything that's in orange, reddish, is what we have not been able to accomplish. So you can see um, for the first row, for example, the legs, it's able to 
uh, the device had to able to have a normal feed and go outwards like a frog-like motion that hypotonic babies usually uh, are in. Um, and then as well as for the range of motion for the elbows, how far up the legs can go, how far up the feet can go, um, the range of motion for the shoulders, all those we have been able to mimic. And this has actually has also been verified by our advisor, uh, Dr. Stoker, who now tested the device and she approved of everything. And so, you know, we just obviously just think of it on the spot. Our first prototype, which we will mention a bit later on, um, we just, it's super basic. It just for us to grasp a better concept of what materials we're looking for, how we will obtain the range of motion that we want, and how to just basically meet our goal. And so with, after we created the first prototype, we compare with the dimensions of the real infant and you know, we get our self feedback on it, we get our advisor's feedback on it, we double check it, um, how well it works with our CAT guidelines, and it was okay, but the biggest issue was it was too big, and that led us to our second prototype, and we were able to get smaller, we still compared the dimensions with an actual infant, and we also checked it with our iPad guidelines as well as talked with our advisors, but this one, we're actually able to be successful enough that we could get feedback surveys for nursing students at SJSU. And you know, we also implemented um, those feedback into our final prototype, which we um, presented at the BNES conference. And for our cost, um, it seems a bit expensive for a dummy, you know, ranging from $50 to up to $120, but as a matter of fact, this is a very good price for a dummy. Um, even though right now it's still basic, we're still missing a lot of components. For our rough prototype right now, this is a very good price. As you can see, for prototype one, uh, most of the money was allocated to the limbs, and in prototype two, most of that was located to the joints and stuff, which is the most important part of the device. And we also had to spend other money on some miscellaneous stuff like glue, saw, um, things and screw caps needs to, to get us uh, to help us put the device together. And obviously, we did not have any money. I mean, sorry, we didn't spend any money for hands and feet since we're still working on that. So, the result comprises of multiple sections, but we'll start with comparing the first and second prototype, like Maria was just saying. Uh, the first prototype was, was pretty good in explaining the range of motion that, that, that we need to satisfy the. Uh, the IPAT criteria, but it was too large. As you can see, it's about 25 centimeters, the, the length, that's with excluding the feet, it's about 50 centimeters with the feet, so it was really big. And uh, the, whereas the second prototype is more uh, smaller, and it compares more to an actual, uh, to, to an actual baby. And as for the limbs, uh, that our the second prototype had smaller uh, limbs, smaller arms, smaller legs, which was pretty, which is a, which resembles an actual baby a lot more. Whereas the first one was a lot bigger as well. A range of motion they both had similar range of motion. As we said, this one was used just to explain to us how to position the baby and how to uh, how to provide the range of motion that we actually need. Uh, aesthetic. This one is just a stick figure, uh, whereas that one, the second prototype was actually uh, resembles resembles a baby. Like it's more realistic. Uh, they're both equally, they're both equally strong. The second prototype is a little stronger because PVC pipes are stronger than wood, but the, 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 it should do, it should be enough for the job because the, they won't be uh, applying excess force on them. And as for the cost, this one was like fifty dollars, so it was average cost, but it was made out of wood, whereas that one was more like hundred and twenty dollars, which is slightly expensive, but it's still inexpensive compared to other dummies that are out there. They range from thousands of dollars until up to hundred thousand dollars, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for the device that you spoke about earlier and used in the nursing department. Uh, so for comparing the dimensions of the prototype to an actual baby was also part of the results section. And um, we compared each part, like the left arm, the left leg, right arm, right leg. Our prototype um, was almost was a little bigger than an actual baby, which is okay because it's just, it just needs to replicate it, but not 100%. So uh, our prototype ten, 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 tends to be a little bit bigger in general. Uh, the left arms are bigger, left legs are bigger. But then you have to come. We also added the error bar, the error bars into the graph because 
we're ranging from 30 to 33 weeks, baby. Like th th this is the average, it's like 31 week, baby. But we have to range from the, the, lower, the lower end to the higher end of the premature babies. So in general, we were close enough uh, to the actual dimensions of an actual baby. And for the degree, for the range of motion of the each part, we also did it graphically represented it. Uh, the left arm, the, the, they're all actually very similar. The left arm, the left leg, right arm, right leg. As you can see, the infant is in purple and the, uh, our prototype is in red. We were able to achieve similar, a similar range of motion since we implanted uh, ball and socket joints and, and on the shoulders and the hips, which provided that movement that's really needed for the shoulder and, the, and also the legs. And then we also did uh, surveys that uh, Maria mentioned in the method section. Uh, the surveys were was done in the nursing department here at San Jose State. Uh, nursing students who have experience with premature babies actually practiced with the prototype and gave us their feedback. As you can see, most of our, we did size replication, weight replication, and uh, real, realism and other range of motion uh, like um, replication so that they could tell us how our prototype feels in comparison to an actual baby. And um, we got like most, mo mostly agreed, a lot of agrees, and some strongly agrees as well. Uh, the one that was low quality was uh, the, re the, the realism of the baby isn't realistic. Of course, ours is made out of pipes. Once we add that polymer layer outside, or future students add the polymer layer outside, they would feel more realistic. And that, that would hopefully uh, settle that problem. But in general, we have very good feedback from the nurses, and it was pretty, pretty good. Uh, from what we heard from them, uh, future work, uh, uh, we have to um, we have to make it uh, like the interface a little bit better. Um, hopefully, implant a force sensor in that detects when you're adding too much force, so that would cause like an alarm system or like a, some type some type of al alert to the nurse who's practicing on it, so that they know that they're overdoing it. And uh, we want to improve the mechanical movements uh, since there's a challenge of coating it with polymers. It's going to restrict some joints. We have to think about how we're going to leave some joints out. And we, we want it to be in more like baby shape, more less blocky and smaller size. Ours is still a little bigger than premature babies, but we, we it, it could be done. It could be uh, some parts can be shortened. There's room for improvement on that part. On that part. And uh, like I said, we have to cover the prototype with a polymer, some kind of polymer. Uh, that, that we, we won't be able to do that now. Hopefully the future students will be able to do that. And they can achieve the less luckiness, hopefully by 3D printing some parts. Like we have pipes in the torso, they can replace it with a 3D printed uh, square like on the torso, which could make it look more compact or more realistic. Um, and finally, like we said, we have to achieve the objective. We hopefully want to reach the position where nurses can actually work with our prototype to learn how to position and handle infants, and hopefully re reduce the rates of hypotonia that is, uh, that is, that's experienced by uh, premature infants all over the world. That's it. These are our acknowledgements, actually. Uh, the nursing department for the surveys, and uh, Maria's dad, Mr. Tran, helped us build the prototypes, and uh, Dr. Erbova, of course, helped us uh, a lot with the poster and a lot of other paperwork that we needed. That's the references. Thank you. That's it. Thank you.